I'm going to start out talking about a lot of theory in the golf swing to start. All right. And then we'll get to what you have to kind of think about or what you can do. So stand over here for me just so I can get it in the camera. Um, the way that I'm seeing your swing right now is that you've got a wide stance. You're aiming a little bit to the left of your target, probably hoping that it draws back, but it's a little bit left of where I think you're going. And what I'm seeing in your motion is that you've got a pretty good backswing. You take this back pretty far. It's really good. But on the way through, it's all arms that get to here. So we're not, we're not really activating the body as much. So if I think about this from like an inside out thing, I want my inside responsible for turning the outside. But you're kind of using the arm to swing the club around your body. So the first thing is understanding like what our arms are supposed to do in the swing. And see you later. And so what the arms are supposed to do is they're supposed to lift the club up relative to our chest and they're supposed to thump the club into the ground. So up and down, right? But I also, at the same time, I'm turning my body one way and then the other way. So I've got a vertical move and I've got a horizontal move. And we put those two together, we get what looks like the swing plane on that angle. So in terms of the speed of where I want your arms to go, it's a lot of up and down. So the second that you turn your body into your backswing here, now the up and down motion is here, right? But if I don't turn, I hit here. If I turn a little bit, I hit there. If I turn a little more, I hit there. If I turn a little more, I hit there. But what I'm not doing is trying to get my arms to go around my ribs and then my arms to go around my ribs on that side. That's kind of where this part of the club, put your hand out for a sec. So that's as long as I can get it. But if I go around my ribs and around my ribs, it's too short. And that's why we're not thumping the ground. So we're kind of hitting it thin. So the way that I want you to think about this, first of all, right off the bat, is that we're going to hit shots where you feel like it's your full normal backswing. And I want you to have a short follow through. All right. So my body's turned facing the target, but I've kept my arms down here. I haven't swung them forward and I haven't swung them back up again. Even though we see good players make their arms kind of go, their hands go from here, down, across, and up like a big U, the speed is only over here. It glides for the rest of it. So I want to actually hit the brakes to my arms and slow my arms down because the power sources in the golf swing have a lot to do with speeding something up, slowing something down. And then something else speeds up and something else slows down. So it's like gas and brakes. So if I was sitting on the hood of your car and we're fl I'm driving, you're driving down the highway, the second that you hit the brake, I go flying. I go 10 times faster. So I want it to feel as though that you're making a swing where into the golf ball, this is where your arms slow down because that's what's going to make the club go faster. If I held my hand here and I swung my hand in my one hand into the other hand, right? The stopping of that hand makes the club head take off. Absolutely. So we get our whipping action, not from a motion in our hands. We get it from stopping the lead arm and things continue. So to, what's important is that in that is that we're not squeezing the club so tight that the arms lose their wrist flexibility. I want my wrist to be oily and loose and floppy. Okay. Definitely floppy. So I feel as though that through this shot, we make the same backswing. I bring it down into the ball, slow my arms down and the club keeps going. So big backswing, short finishes to start, but also making sure that as you do that, that you still face the target because we have to keep the body moving this way in order for the ax chopping motion to hit further forward. So if I didn't turn my body and I did the right thing with my arms, boom. Okay. If I turn my body and didn't do my arms until the end, boom. Right. So somewhere in the middle of that is us taking a divot. Now the divot's a good thing. I want you to feel like you're taking a chunk of turf today, but for this first, for the beginning of this, I want it to feel like you're leaving the club in the divot and the ball is going to take off. So this is kind of called a punch shot, but the reason we're going to do this is because it's going to control the speed of this club. So the club doesn't overtake our body. It goes back this way and I turn my body to hit the ball. So one of the, one of the theories that we could have here is that, you know, if the club was out here on my hip, right, I've got to get my hip past the ball in order for the club to hit it. And if we can control the inside of your swing via something like that, right, I'm not using my arms. I'm just holding the club here, turning my body that way. That's what's going to get the golf club to the ball and past the ball. 
not my arms. Okay. Um, I've called that swing the wheelchair swing where we could literally sit in a chair. Right. right. See how I missed it? I missed it because I sped my arms up all the way around my body. But if I felt as though that I just went up and down, that ball, the club's going to hit the ground hard and the ball's going to take off. So short finishes with the arms, low finishes with the arms, but fully turned facing your target from the knees to the shoulders. There you go. Show me a couple practice swings. One more time. Only down. I don't want you to swing the club forward. The body turns forward. That was really good. One more time. So if I stood here, I don't want to be hit by your golf club. Whack. One more time. There. So not going to hit me. One more time. Hit, make the club hit the ground. It slows it down. There. Good job. Hit one like that. How'd that feel? Totally. You felt the club release or snap, right? And we had less overall force in your swing, like borderline effortless. Okay. So when your arms go to the right of you like this, you end up with a bent arm and a bent wrist. When you do it the right way, both of those stay very straight and long. Yeah, don't bring your arms this way. Arms don't go around you like that. Keep them low, keep them down. There, that one. Beautiful, nice divot. I went far. Good. So right now, this is going to feel like it's an abbreviated swing, and I have no problem with it because the more that I can get you to turn your body toward the target, the speed of that is going to send your arms up a little higher. The speed of that, right? Not the speed of your arms. Right. So I don't want to start getting into what we'll call a full finish yet because you'll just pull your arms up and in. I want it to feel as though that you're just throwing down to the ground. Yep. Boom, down into it. Yeah, we'll, we'll start getting you a little more forward with your left side and a little taller, right? And we'll go from this finish to that finish just by getting using more of your body. But we're ta I'm trying to take the majority of your arm speed out of this. There you go. Great shot. Wow, a little heavy. Sounded good, though. Okay, so anytime the ball gets hit thin or fat like that, it's the arm speed was trap was going too fast for too long. Okay. So set up to a, set up to this ball for me. Not the best live, but it'll work. Okay, you'll feel like your arms slow themselves down back here. There you go. Good job. And so this is where I think you're having trouble with your driver. My guess is that you curve it that way a bunch. Or it can curve that way too. Both ways. And so all that is, is the power that you're giving the grip is going past the ball. So here's my analogy for all of this. So hold the club in your left hand. All right, imagine you had a bull whip in your glove hand. Okay? And you had to like crack the whip at the ball. Would you ever pass the ball to do it? Or would you stop short of the ball? Bingo. Stop the handle, sends the energy out to the end. So one more time, hold your finish. 
try not to let your arms go onto the, the right side of you here. So take it back to the top, hold it there. Okay, so your arms are on the left of you, right? They're on this side of you. Keep moving this so that this stays on the left. So start turning to the target. Turn, turn, stand, boom, hold it there. That's the end of your swing. That's where I want you to feel like you ended. Good, that's it. Good. So I want to work like that whole pile, Andrew will bring some more here, just on this little punch shot move. And then the next step to this, to give you an idea of where we're going to go, is I'm going to start getting your left leg to get more forward. Because right now it's hanging back. But that's, we need the arms under control first. And if I put the leg in now, you'll top it. Okay? Piece by piece. Okay. Oh. The next step to this, the next thing we want to try and get to is that We've got the arm slowing down. I can see by the holes you've left in the ground. Okay, so we're trying to feel as though that the arms slow down to kind of finish this way. But in order to get a little bit more speed, there we go. To get a little more speed to this, we want to try and feel like you're getting taller. So notice from where you're standing, you can't see my right leg anymore. Now you can. So that means my hips are like this. But if I put my leg forward, it turns my body more. So I want it to feel as though that as you're kind of hitting down this way, that you're really trying to get this pocket forward, okay? It's not only going to go forward, but it might feel like it goes up, like your belt's higher from the ground than it is over here. So the big part that releases the golf club is us standing up because the arms are responsible for bringing the club down. But what gets this club out of the ground is my leg standing up. So I want to feel like as I'm hitting the ball that I'm getting taller right? Taller and turn to the target better. And that's what's going to take your finish and get it more up here. But if we stayed low and you did a lot of turn and lift, then it goes up there the wrong way. Make sense? So let's go with that one, different club. Good. One more time. Hold your finish. Hold it there. Okay. So this more forward. Yeah. If you if you can't get there, your stance is too wide. Nice shot. How's that for an eight iron? Far. So let's talk about why the ball doesn't fly straight. So when you swing through and your hands end up close to you on your right side, that's pulling the club to the right. And that's what's making it go that way. If we can feel like the arms don't pull up and in, that they slow down even more down here by your feet and you stand up, it's going to send the ball out to the left a little more. So in terms of like kind of polar opposites or bookends on this, if my hands finish close to the right, I'm going to pull it to the right. If my hands finish long and out to the left, it's going to start to the left. We need something in the middle.
Okay, one more time. The strike is way better, huh? Yeah, it feels like the contact is a lot more consistent. It's great. I like it. Okay, so feet a touch closer together. And then move your feet back this way so the ball is more forward. Good. There you go. Okay, now hold your finish. Okay, hold it there. Now push your arms at where I am here. Yep. So we want to keep the arms long and in front of you. So like the left, sorry, your right arm stays straight in the backswing. And I want to feel like it stays straight in the follow through. So we can almost think that once the club hits the ball, that you don't have elbows anymore. No more elbow bend. And it's not just as simple as thinking, okay, I'm not going to bend my arms. You just have to feel like they don't do anything. Yeah, your arms straighten into the ground and then your body turns them through. So it's not like I'm asking you to straighten them in the direction of the target. I'm trying to get you to straighten them in the direction of the ground and turn through tall to get them there. What a shot. Okay, driver. Now that we've got the right motion, the right mechanics. Okay, that went left, grip pulled in. Let's tone this down a little with this guy. So we're going to build into more speed, but for now, I just want to kind of get the mechanics down. So I want you to feel like you can take this back and really get the body through with the arms long this way. And just try to feel as though that you're, you're focused on getting into the right finish rather than hitting the ball. Okay. okay? So right knee over your, or sorry, left knee over your right shoe. Right arm stays long, right? I don't really care where it goes, but the more it goes up, the more it's gonna bend. Right there, okay? Clearly I'm not a lefty. No, I've, I've tried over the years, but I get caught in a bunker and my score goes to hell. Good, one more time. So shorter with the arms, earlier with the knee. Shorter with the arms, still swinging up too far. There, let's hit that one.
You got all the right pieces to it. You know, it's weird. On the course, I find like that arm thing intuitively, like when I'm overdrawing everything, mm -hmm. I'm constantly left like finishing my swings out here, trying to fight off the. Yeah. Hey, that's better. Another one? Yeah. And see it. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. So one thing with the driver, there's lots of info out there that says, hey, if you widen your stance, you get a better base. All that's doing is making the club go too shallow and you'll pop underneath it or hit down on it too much. Either way, not the ideal. The more that we can keep the, the feet about one shoe width apart, makes it easier for the right side to get over to the left. It is, absolutely. And so I want to try and feel from a, a timing perspective. And timing is a little bit of like one body part relative to another not timing, not rhythm or sequence. It's going to be more about trying to feel like you can get the right, the, the trail knee forward before the club gets to the ball. You'd be hitting like this. Then when your body clears, it pulls things over onto the side. Yes. earlier. Yep, knee over the shoe before the club gets down to the ball. That one. That was the best one yet. So, not full speed, but like 80%. So, when the legs don't do what they're supposed to do, the upper body kind of takes over to hit it, and it's like trying to shoot a bazooka from a skateboard. Right, too much up here, not enough stability down there. So if you can try and feel as though that from the top end of your backswing, that everything is in your feet and in your legs to get you into that finish I talked about, that's what maintains balance. Yeah, start with the legs right from the top. Yeah, you can think of it a different way that the arms are kind of, the body's responsible for getting the club into the backswing, but what makes the club change direction is you trying to get your legs over. Good. And so the only way you get out of sequence is if you take your arms and speed them up in the race, right? I want the arms to feel like that they're not trying to get back to the ball so soon, that they're trying to stay back here as your body orients itself differently, then they get to the ball. Yeah. 
So leave your arms in a backswing feel for a little longer. It's not going to be a pause because you'll be moving. Yeah, just feel like you keep a backswing feel into the downswing, if that makes sense. Good. The arms are kind of, the body's responsible for getting the club into the backswing. But what makes the club change direction is you trying to get your legs over. Good. And so the only way you get out of sequence is if you take your arms and speed them up in the race, right? I want the arms to feel like that they're not trying to get back to the ball so soon, that they're trying to stay back here as your body orients itself differently, then they get to the ball. Yeah, so leave your arms in a backswing feel for a little longer. It's not gonna be a pause because you'll be moving. Yeah, just feel like you keep a backswing feel into the downswing, if that makes sense. Good. So that shot's the same thing. It's still the arms doing it. Yep. So I'm going to grab something here. Hit one more. Okay, so here's a cool idea that, you know, if you look on the internet, it's all over the place. But if I take this stick and extend the shaft, okay, you can see that it's set up. See how it touches my side here? All right, so if I take it up to the top and I just move my arms, that stick's going to hit my side every day. So eventually I'm going to get a bruise. The idea here is to feel as though that from the top of the swing, where this space from the bruise to the stick, see how it's getting wider, wider, wider? If I move my bruise out of the way, now I can get my arms into place to hit the ball with lots of space. But if the arms keep trying to power the club with the body staying stationary, that keeps hitting me in the side. So the idea is to feel as though that this right love handle, once this goes to the top and creates the most space possible, by moving that love handle out of the way, now it creates room for the club, but now I'm not going to get hit by it. So feel the spot on your side where it's touching and crank it up to the top and now move that side of you where it was touching out of the way. You're right. Good, one more time, take it up to the top. Okay, hold it there. Okay, start moving this out. Keep going, keep going, keep going. There, that's what I'm talking about. And that's moving the whole front of you forward. Yeah, and now can you do that same thing again, but keep the club out in front of you so you keep the space and it never hits you? Like that, yeah, come look. Good. 